Hello, my name is Mark Brown. I'm glad to bring you this devotion today. I'm a member of Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, and I'm still teaching uh, half-time at Wisconsin Lutheran College in Milwaukee. I'd like to read for you a uh, part of scripture from Matthew chapter 24. These are the words of Jesus. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and deceive many. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. You are probably familiar with the word utopia or hearing something being described as a utopian land or company. Um, <clears throat> utopia means a perfect place or at least a place where there's great harmony and effectiveness and people care about each other and systems all work well. We would like to think of being uh, in a utopia in our land and in our church. There is a, an opposite word which may not be quite as familiar, so I'm putting it out in front of you here, dystopia or dystopian. And this is saying that you're in a place where things are chaotic and troublesome, even violent, and things are not working as they should. I really became familiar with this word really for the first time, maybe not the first time, but close to it, when the Hunger Games movies began to come out because they pictured a very dystopian world. The world that Jesus describes in Matthew 24 sounds like a dystopian place as well. We might think, and I think there have always been some sincere Christians who did think, that the world is just going to keep on getting better and better, more Christian, more loving, people will also be um, more affected by the gospel and there will be a great age of harmony. I remember having a long conversation with one Christian years ago where he said, that's what I see in the future. And my only comment back to him was, I don't see where Jesus said that. Because what he said here when he talked about the last days are days that are filled with persecution and trouble, with rejection from people. He says the love of many will grow cold and I would imagine as you heard those words, you thought, that sounds like now. It's common to hear people say that the world is so much worse than it used to be. Sometimes I wonder if it really is worse or it's just that we have a dozen different 24-hour cable stations that are telling us about all the things that happen, often accompanied by video. But Jesus' words stand all the same. We cannot expect this world to be a utopian place because sin came into the world and sin affects us all. And as we get closer to the end, Jesus says, those wicked and unsettling things are going to become worse and more severe. But then almost in mid-sentence, he changes tone and he says, this gospel will be preached to the end of the world and will be told to all people as a witness to them, and through this gospel we are saved. The truly utopian message is the one of Jesus Christ. Not because he's telling us that we can remake this earth to be a perfect place, but because he came into our dystopian world to suffer for us, to take on our guilt, to die on the cross, to forgive us, and to promise us, I will take you out of this place. I will take you one day to be with all those I have died for and are redeemed, all those whom the Holy Spirit brought to have their trust in me, and we will go to a place where all of these disturbing things will be forgotten. Doesn't that sound wonderful? God is not asking us as Christians to hide in a corner, to lock our doors and pull the blinds and hope nobody sees us and say, I'm going to hide out be so afraid we don't even want to get out of our beds in the morning. He still wants us to be in the world, telling others about Jesus and what he's done, living as servants and friends to others. But he also wants us to keep hope because he is planning this place for us. He has prepared us for it, and he knows when the time will be right 
to take us there to his utopian heaven. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. We pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came into a difficult, painful, and dangerous world, not because you were looking for problems, but because you were coming to be a solution. You came to pay for our sins and to bring us the hope of a better life after this one. Help us to believe your promises. Help us to believe your gospel and the good news of your forgiveness and your grace. Help us not to lose heart. Help us not to become overwhelmed at how bad the world is and to say, look what's come to the world, but to rejoice and say, look who has come to the world. You have come and you will come again. We thank you. In your name, amen.